I've got 30 days in Belize, and I've done some cool things so far, like swimming with sharks and rays in Key Cocker. Two weeks in, and I already feel like I'm running out of time. I still have most of the country to explore. So now I'm setting off on a north to south trip that will bring me to just about every corner of the country. It's not a large place, but there's a lot to see. Come and explore this lush and beautiful country with me. Well, it's my first time getting gas here in Belize and it's a little confusing. I thought this place uses the metric system, so I thought it was in liters. So I think it is 11 Belize dollars per gallon, which makes more sense, which is still incredibly expensive. Okay, so it turns out it is full service, at least at this pump. And it was $12, 12 Belize dollars per gallon. <laughs> it's crazy. So if you cut that in half, that is $6 per gallon US. And Canadian, I don't know. Um, but anyway, it cost me about $75 to fill up half tank. <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> Man, Belize is expensive. <laughs> fresh off my key cocker trip, it's good to be in the truck, and the first place I'm headed is a park. Mayflower, Bocawina National Park, <laughs> that's where we're at right now. I've actually been here for a couple hours, uh, but it's been so hot, I just kind of stayed in the shade, in the camper, doing some work, but this park has some amazing hikes apparently that I'm going to go check out uh, tomorrow, but also right now I'm going to go on a hike that I definitely don't want to miss while I'm here. Um, I'm gonna do it while the sun is going down and it's not too hot. So let's get to it. There's the truck right here. There's the camping area. Just an open field, but there is showers, there's toilets. Uh, it even comes with some uh, included fresh water to drink. So. I'm glad I didn't buy water earlier in town when I bought groceries. Uh, saved myself some money. It's 4.30 and it's still crazy hot. Wow. That's nice. Holy. Now, I enjoy hiking but I'm still not used to doing it in basically 100% humidity. Not to mention this trail was more than I bargained for. But I got my first ever elevated look at Belize. Only more to come. From one park to the next, I'm headed to the world's first Jaguar preservation. <laughs> On the way into Coxcomb, it's already looking really cool. It's like I'm driving into a safari in the middle of the jungle here. <laughs> this is really neat. 10 kilometers on a bumpy back road, I finally make it to my home for the night. And neighbors with the ants, I'm sure. And this is where I'm gonna be staying for at least one night, maybe two, uh, we'll see. Apparently it's a helicopter landing site right here. Um, hopefully I don't need to move in the middle of the night. <laughs> anyway, let's get set up. So as it's still pretty early and the temperature is surprisingly pleasant, I think I'm gonna go check out a couple of the hikes now because um, there is quite a bit and I'm not sure if I'm gonna spend two nights or one night here, so let's go check it out. Self-guided nature trails. It's hard to tell how far it is, but it's only like 300 meters. And then this one that goes to a, a viewpoint, it's only about two kilometers, so yeah, let's go check it out. Overlanding isn't just about driving from place to place. Once in a while, you need to get out and explore where the vehicle can't get to. Good thing I enjoy hiking. So apparently we have a swimming area here. I'm 
Not sure if I would swim. I know there's crocodiles in Belize. <laughs> but it's a nice spot. I think this is where they pick you up when you do the tubing. A nice spot to try and see wildlife. But nothing. At least the trees can't get away. And they are impressive. Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Area is incredibly important. The jaguar is considered to be near threatened to extinction due to the fact that Central America is big in the deforestation, especially for growing crops for farming. So this park is incredibly valuable to the survival of jaguars and probably many other numerous species. And jaguars need lots of living area to be able to have a proper life. This wonderful place is able to give that to them. I think I finally made it to the summit. To be honest, I didn't know it was gonna be this kind of a summit. Woo -wee! It is humid and I am sweaty. This may not be the best time to travel in Central America. In fact, I haven't seen one other traveler on the road or in any camp spots so far in Belize. But that won't stop me. I'm here and loving it. And what we see over there, looks like that's the highest peak. Oh no, sorry. Looks like that is the second highest peak in all of Belize. It's called Victoria Peak. There's a sign right here. There's a hike there, but I'm not ready to do that. Victoria Peak is a multi-day trek. To get to the summit is only accessible from this park. From the Jaguar Preserve with no Jaguars, I'm headed all the way south to Punta Gorda, but with a few stops along the way. The roads are all very flat and very straight, so I make really good time. Just stopping a little Mayan ruined city. Um, there's a couple in the south end. Um, there's two I know I'm going to be stopping at, maybe if I can find more. Um, but yeah, I haven't been able to find too much to do in the south end of Belize, but these ruins are usually pretty cool. So let's go check it out. This small, out of the way Mayan city is called Nimli Punit, and not much remains of it, except for the ball court, shown here. The most interesting thing of note that I saw here, for the first time I saw open burial chambers directly in front and below the temples. Moving south to another Mayan city, this one's name is Lubantun. This site that I'm at right now has got some pretty interesting history. Uh, back in the 1920s, they excavated this place with dynamite and they uncovered something interesting, what is known as a crystal skull. Now, I don't know if you've seen Indiana Jones or not, but they did a movie basically about what they found here. Um, it's pretty cool, whether, whether you believe it's real or just a hoax, uh, that's still to be determined. Um, some people think that the crystal skull was made in Europe and brought over here and they discovered it, but I like to think that it's real. Now, as you can see, everywhere, this place is just an absolute mess. Nothing preserved like any of the other ruins uh, that, you know, Lindsay or I have been to. You can clearly see that they definitely use dynamite <laughs> in this place. Jesus. It's a pretty big site. It's just a shame that it's in such bad condition. That's all. And finally, all the way south to Punta Gorda. So right about now, I'm at the most southern, southeast I could drive in Belize, um, the town of Punta Gorda. Uh, there's nothing really here, um, as far as I'm concerned. 
I'm gonna go look around, see what is here though. Um, yeah, just another spot to, to see, you know? I'm here to see Belize. Um, I think I'm using up my 30 days pretty good. Not set up for tourism at all. There was nothing to see. Even the lady in the tourism booth I spoke to said people don't usually come here and there was really nothing she pointed me towards. Most people who come here are for the ferry to Guatemala. Satisfied with my time in southern Belize, I'm headed back north to the town of Hopkins. Where I find the most amazing spot on the water to set up camp with a cool breeze, soft sand, and the right temperature. Is this not paradise? Wow, this has got to be one of the best spots that me or Lindsay has ever camped on. <laughs> and wow, I wish she was here. This is way better now that there's a bit of breeze. Finally, the last spot was just way, way too hot. Ah, this is gonna be amazing. I think I'm gonna spend all day tomorrow here just lounging around doing nothing. <laughs> Maybe get some work done if I can. This breeze is amazing. I actually ended up staying here three nights, but this was the last time I'd camp on the beach for a very long time. Locals came and went, and everyone was curious about me and my journey. People of Belize are wonderful. So I'm heading back north um, to like mid Belize, then heading west. Um, but obviously I need to stop and get some food and some water, you know, eventually. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I'll show you how we get water here as, you know, the, the water isn't safe from the tap and everything like that. So it's like Mexico where you get the water from the Garifons. The... 30 liter bottles so that's what we're gonna get and I'll also show you how difficult it is to find food <laughs> yes I'm also wondering why I didn't just pour out the water into my main tank but here we are pouring extra just for fun okay so most of the stores are like this they're like three aisles maybe four if you're lucky and I'm surprised they actually had bread because most places I've been to don't even have sliced bread. Um, then I got some pasta, some instant coffee because they don't have anything else, and then like some beans. <laughs> so literally only minimal essentials you can kind of find in most of the cities here in Belize. This is the town of Hopkins. Um, nice little spot, but hard to find anything. Um, but yeah. Just keep moving. Let's head to the mountains or mountains. <laughs> Starting the drive on what is known as the Hummingbird Highway. I'm driving into what Belize has for mountains now, it looks like. Um, I'm looking forward to some nice views and some different topography for change. Um, gonna miss the breeze of the ocean but that's the change. Let's roll. Starting to see something new in Belize, I start the westward journey along the Hummingbird Highway to, you guessed it, another park. The beautiful scenery emerges as do the rolling hills of the interior. And I'm once again on gravel the moment I get off the main highway. Five Blue Lakes National Park. That's where I'm heading right now. A little bit of gravel for the past uh, 15 minutes from the highway. It's not bad. It's actually some of the best gravel I've ever driven on. Um, but since it's the rainy season, there are some rain clouds coming and I'm hoping it doesn't scare me out of here. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, I'm here now. I find out that the park is technically not open, but the workers let me in anyway since I made the drive. And that means it was free. Looks like I found a swimming area. I unfortunately didn't bring any sort of swimming clothes, but I guess that doesn't matter. 
I'm the only one here. I could probably just go mind over. Ants are everywhere here in Belize, and these leafcutter ants are always on the move. Well, the trail is right in front of me. There's a bit of an obstacle though. It looks like I'm gonna get wet. <laughs> I've done worse in the military, I tell myself. And in fact, it's rather refreshing. I still have to get the camera though. There's also these spooky caves and I can hear howler monkeys around here too. This is a pretty neat spot. Let's check it out. My first experience seeing these formations the western part of the country is much different than the coast. This park was formed in 1991 and is home to 167 species of birds, 20 species of bats, and all of the five wildcats in Belize. Of which none I saw, obviously, but that doesn't stop me from admiring the beauty of the land. These unique limestone cliffs appear to go on forever. But the trail doesn't, and I don't want to get lost, so I head back to the truck. Heading further west, I'm nearing the end point of my trip in Belize. So I've made it to my spot for the night. We went through the town of Belmopan to grab a couple things like um, some groceries and do laundry but something important I had to do because something happened last night so it's the rainy season and it gets pretty crazy at night and last night something fell on the truck and I had to buy one of these <laughs> you can't tell what that is it is a windshield repair kit because something landed on the window and it cracked it Ugh. I was really worried it was going to be uh, much more difficult to fix. Let's hope I can do it with this home repair kit. I'll see. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Something hit right here, and then there's a crack going up. The worst thing you want to do is uh, have extra expenses while you're traveling. This is something I never wanted to have. This event made me think. While this small damage doesn't affect how the vehicle performs, I am reminded that the Toyota's reliability over the past eight years of ownership has been second to none. I've put over 200,000 kilometers on this truck and over 25,000 on this trip alone. And with regular maintenance, she hasn't skipped one beat. And there we go. Homemade uh, windshield repair. Hope it lasts. <laughs> So honestly, I think my time here in Belize is almost up. I've driven from the north tip down to the south tip in Punta Gorda. I've seen mine ruins in between. I've stayed days on beaches. I've seen a couple cities. And you know, I'm a bit of a thrifty traveler as we are traveling multiple countries internationally. So we can't be spending our money on everything we want to do. There's so much more I'd like to see and do here, but the next thing we're doing is the Pine Ridge Mountains, which is about the most remote I think you can get in all of Belize. And that's what's coming next, either tomorrow or the next day. I'm not quite sure. But as far as I'm concerned, I've done most of Belize that I want to do. And what an incredible country. Um, but it's going to be time to move on soon. So I can't wait to see you in the next video. Maybe the last video of Belize. So stick around. Not a bad place to end the third week in Belize. I hope I'll see you on the next episode of Just Traveling. A quick update on Lindsay. This is where we're going on today. Hopefully the rain stays away. She is doing well and spirits are high. She is connecting with friends that she hasn't seen in a long time. Santi! Santi! Cheers! 
She couldn't have asked for a better time to be home in Belgium. The weather is favorable, and especially compared to the rainy season of Central America. <laughs> Complete focus. We are still waiting on the doctors to give us a complete diagnosis of her condition. Hopefully, we're not waiting too much longer. On the final week and episode of Just Traveling in Belize, I'm headed for some remoteness, the Pine Ridge Mountains on the west, next to Guatemala. There's all manner of places and interesting things to explore and see, like big caves and ghost towns. And of course, there are some high elevation mine cities. 30 days goes pretty quick, but I'm happy to be able to bring this to you. And I hope to see you next time on Just Traveling.